Hi, welcome to another epidose of these crazy people that just eat me and can't stop talking about it. <laughs> to my left, at least on my screen, we have Raymond Nizan, the six pack Asian, Joe Zumbo down in Asia, down in Australia, <laughs> Emily nice. over in space, obviously with <laughs> Raymond. What's up with that? You know, you guys are both going to get copyright strikes. <laughs> Tom Clark, which is actually at a flooring place trying to get some help with some floors. Um, there was some miscommunication on the timing. And our special guest today, the other Asian with an eight pack, Charmaine. <laughs> I like that eight pack. <laughs> and today we are here to discuss her journey of doing straight 30 day carnivore, which um, I like to give myself and Tom a little credit for yeah. getting Charmaine on the meat eating carnivore train. So yeah, so go ahead. I think you could just start by letting us know how that went compared to keto. Mm -hmm. You know, for those that don't know, um, Charmaine's normally keto, and she has a very successful business as a sugar-free self-care coach that I'm sure we'll get into more later. But go ahead and take it, Charmaine. Wow, man, that was such a great intro. I, I just, man, I got goosebumps. Um, we love you. <laughs> but, um, thank you guys for having me. This is kind of a fun moment to think of because it's just kind of bringing me back to when I first met you guys um, back in March, I think. And that's so cool, um, you know, that we've kept in touch since then. Like, I love the support you guys have been, given me. But yeah, like, definitely when we met in the Adapt Keto event in Long Beach a few months ago, um, I was still on the fence. I was like, oh, I don't know if I should do this. Um, but, but then out of nowhere, like, these two dudes just approached me at the conference and they're like, hey, you know, want to talk on our podcast? I'm like, who are you? And then, like... <laughs> And then we just, um, we kept in touch and um, I learned so much about them that, that yeah, eating carnivore can actually be sustainable and it can do a lot for you, um, even when I wasn't sure and skeptical. <laughs> um, so that was awesome. I want to know, what was your most skeptical moment before you went in, when you were, you know, right before you jumped in? Well, the... Um, well, before, I think I mentioned it before, just like the poop situation, I was just like, I just had the most um, disastrous poop situation when I tried it before, and it was like traumatizing to me, and I was like, oh, I don't want to do that again. Um, it was painful, but then I learned like, oh, you can actually manage it, and um, and actually you don't need to go that often, so I was like, that was just mind-blowing in itself, so that helped a lot with this go around. That's right. Give us a little background because you did try carnivore for like a week. So how about you tell us that a little bit? Yeah, I, I got the timelines a little mixed up. But I think before adapt keto or uh, I forgot, but I think it was before like I tried carnivore for like nine days straight. And um, I just wasn't feeling well. Like when I did keto consistently, um, one of the things that I was still struggling with a lot was like not eating nuts, especially like almonds and pecans. I just would keep overeating them. And I think during the time, that time, like, I, I don't know, I was like just eating them a lot. And I didn't really want to feel um, that kind of like lack of control over it. Like I didn't want to keep feeling like I have to eat this. Like it was just getting to the point, like I was eating like a cup a day and then sometimes it'd be two cups a day. And I'm like, oh, this is like a lot more than my body needs. Like I, and I just felt bad. Like I was starting to feel like um, nauseated and I was like, what is up with this? Like I was bloating and I was like, what is it? So I just wanted to cut that out. And then that's when I tried carnivore, but then it felt better. But then, um, but then, yeah, I was scared of the constipation. Right. And you had difficulties during that first uh, nine, uh, when you did nine days, you did have some kind of difficulties during that carnivore. That's why you gave it up, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, now, how long were you keto before that? Oh, since January of 2018. Okay. Yeah. 28. So for, for a good while. So uh, what kind of keto were you? Like, um, well, in the beginning, you know, I think we most, most of us start off with like, kind of like the, the dirtier keto or whatever they call it. Like I was eating, like I wanted to eat all the replacement baked goods with like erythritol and stevia. Cause I still was like, 
there's no way I could give up sugar. Like that's impossible. But then I felt even more addicted to when I ate those like cookie replacement things. Like I love these chocolate chip macadamia nut cookies that had almond flour and erythritol, but I was like, it was like crack. Like I couldn't stop eating it. Like my desire for it went up and then I ate it like every day. It was crazy. Um, so I was like, something's not right here. So, so now I'm really a uh, real food based, like whole, like kind of strict keto. Um, I don't eat any, um, I really don't eat any baked like desserts anymore. Like not even like keto desserts. I, I just don't really, um, have anything with artificial sweeteners anymore. Yeah. Um, it's just really real foods that I like. Were you fasting then in your initial keto? Yeah, like I was fasting probably more like when I started. Okay, I did fasting before keto. And then when I went keto, I was kind of like, oh, I don't need to fast anymore. Like, because I'm eating low carb, I could do whatever I want. Like, I, uh, I have that mentality low carb, you could do whatever. Right. But then I was gaining weight on keto because uh, um, I ended up like eating too many snacks. Like, I was eating the keto bars, the cookies ate too much and then um stopped fasting so i was like um i was like oh something ain't right here like i gained i was like one of the highest weights i've ever been on keto wow so that was like, wow that's <laughs> rare for wow. people i know yeah. yeah like i was overeating way too much like I, I kept wanting like nuts and cheese and keto bars in between meals oh so you were snacking all the time too yeah. Oh man, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me the difference in how you felt when you did the 30 days of carnivore. Oh, so it was like versus when I did keep like kind of strict keto kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was like pretty awesome. Like, well, the first few weeks it was nice. Like I felt like I had more energy and but it's kind of crazy that like it's a little bit of a mix of stuff too because in the middle of carnivore i also stopped drinking coffee so sometimes it's hard whoa. to see what it is yeah no that's <laughs> whoa <laughs> that's <laughs> like yeah legit i i that was your first mistake <laughs> i know right you just made it totally harder for me. yeah no but it was crazy because i was on a youtube channel with bart k and pim jansen and then they told mm -hmm. me oh, coffee's a stimulant. You really don't, like humans don't need it. And I was like thinking about it because I'm a coach and I, I coach people on cravings. And I was like, oh, I think I've been craving coffee. So I eliminated that too. So the first two weeks of carnivore, I felt great. Like I did have more energy, um, steadier energy. I stopped, the nausea stopped. Like all that kind of reflexy thing with the nuts, oh, it yeah. stopped, which was great because it just felt so bad like I had so much nausea like I never had it in my life really before up until like I felt like the stricter I got with keto the more nauseous I got from the nuts for some reason and then um and then so when I eliminated that the bloating went away so that was good um but then when I went off coffee I really felt like I had superpowers <laughs> like wow <laughs> like I oh my god <laughs> I was like the first week off coffee, I felt like sh crap. <laughs> it's, <all right. laughs> like, it's okay. We're losing monetization uh, every yeah. time. It's <laughs> fine because I was like, you oh, obviously wait. haven't seen our conspiracy th videos. <laughs> like, yeah, no, no yeah. way we're getting monetized. Sorry, Tom, that, that revenue. It's any Tom's channel, don't worry. Yeah, uh, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's fine. Anything goes. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, but when I gave a coffee, coffee after, like in one week, I felt like I had superpowers. I was like, I did not feel tired anymore. Like the wow. afternoon slumps just literally, like they went away completely. I wow. have this really steady stream of energy like all day. And if I don't sleep a lot, I still feel awake. So that's the biggest difference. Like it was really hard to get out of bed, but now when I get out of bed, um, I don't feel tired at all. Like I could just get up. I work out like, you know, Joe sees me 5.30 in the morning. We work, I work out. And then, um, and then, yeah, I feel awake the whole day. And I just feel like if I drank coffee, I feel like I'd really um, go crazy. So I'm kind of like, I don't know what would happen if I drank it again. <laughs> right, you get that super pump all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, I'd be a little scared. That, that you don't have problems like, so right when you get up, you don't feel a little groggy or you don't feel a little bit like you could sleep more, none of that, right? 
like the grogginess is not there as much. It's but it's really helping me focus on my quality of sleep now. Cause now uh, I really feel more in tune with my body. Like my like if I don't sleep enough, like if I don't if I sleep past ten PM, I'll really it'll be harder for me to get out of bed. But if I sleep by like nine, nine thirty, um, I could get up pretty easily. So it really challenges me to focus on my consistency with my sleep and pay attention to to what I do, like my sleep hygiene, because if I'm on my phone before I sleep too, um, I, I can't really sleep that well. And you're getting up at what time? Uh, like 5 a.m. 5 a.m., wow, fantastic. That's awesome. Shaman, Shaman can I just ask, were the nuts you, you were eating, were they activated nuts or were they just standard out of the packet? Um, what's this active it's activated? So, 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 so what, what happens is nuts have got a protective coating on them. Mm. Okay, so if ever you soak nuts in water mm -hmm. for 24 hours in salt water, you'll see that there's a, like a layer that peels off the nuts. Oh. And that's what causes a lot of digestive issues as well. So if you don't activate your nuts, so you, you, so you soak them, then, then you rinse them, then you put them in an oven and, or a dehydrator and you just dry them out. Oh. But yeah, that, 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 causes, that, that, cause, that causes a lot of, lot of issues for people. So they don't realize that you've got to eat uh, nuts that have been activated. Oh, that's yeah. so what are the what are the nuts that are like in the store? Um, well, yeah, that, that would just be norm, normal nuts that have been probably not not activated. Obviously, they haven't been soaked in water and okay. had that protective. Because nuts don't want to be. You've got to sprout them, and they don't want to be. Nuts don't want to be eaten. Oh, no. oh my gosh, that's such a good point. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah. regular nuts are just roasted and they're not activated. Um, I just want to throw in that even with active. So the last thing I gave up for carnivore was almonds mm -hmm. and I was actually doing mm -hmm. activated almonds that were organic, mm -hmm. you know, top of the line, $20 a bag for a pound or something Oof. like that. Yeah. A yeah ridiculous they're not cheap. They're not cheap. Yep. Wow. That's a ribeye. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. And so, yeah, that was last And even like one night, like I overdid it with the bag, the pound. I, I don't know why I was determined to blow $20 all at once in one night. So I ate like a pound of activated almonds in a night. And the next day, like my stomach just hurt. And I was like, uh, yeah, I have to. Yeah, I ate about a pound of, of activated almonds <laughs> at one go. Yeah, no. Let's just say uh, some THC helped, you know, but um. <laughs> <laughs> and and netflix you know thc netflix a, a bag of 20 dollar almonds i felt uh -huh. like a king you know <laughs> and and you know but just like a king you know that next morning oof you're not feeling very royal so um <laughs> oh, no. so, so yeah so activated you still felt even like activated That's even cool. activated yes oh wow yeah um, yeah, I mean, mine was from Costco, so, <laughs> like, just the, the raw, I would get the raw Kirkland almonds from Costco, and, or the pecans, and, I mean, I would roast them myself at home, like, I would roast them in butter, um, but then, yeah, even, the, like, the, the pecans are better than the almonds, like, I wouldn't get as much reflux, but, um, but, yeah, it, it still feel, like, acidic or something around my throat, and, but the almonds really made me feel like nauseous. So I was like, and that never happened before. So it was weird, like doing keto for years, you know? So you have reflux or had, should I say? Yeah, with the, with the nuts for with some that. reason, like, okay. even though I've been eating them for like my whole keto journey. Mm. So I don't know if it was a matter of like, I was kind of getting more dialed in with my food. Like I was like eliminating a lot more food now. Um, Cause I mean, I eat really simple. Like it's just, um, at the time, it was just like veggies, um, meat, and um, and then the nuts, basically. So I felt like I, I don't know. The more I eliminated, it's kind of like I, I I don't know what happened there. <laughs> I think I think that this is just my theory is that as we heal, then <laughs> things are revealed to us more, right. and and as we become more in tune with our body, we're able to really hear what's going on. Um, right. so, I mean, that, that might've been part of your journey with that. Um, so what kind of things did you eat on carnivore the 30 days? 
Um, so it's very like, a, I keep wanting to call it like kind of like a carnivora with training wheels kind of thing, but um, basically it's just like, so I was eating mostly pork or beef, um, just like the, the slow cooked pork or slow cooked beef. And um, I would eat cheese, like um, a lot of cheese shell tacos. And, um, and then yeah, avocado oil, mayo, and that, that's like, it, it, oh, sorry, eggs and bacon. And that's like it, I think. Yeah. So what's Training Wheels about that? No, I mean, that's real legit. Oh, I mean, it's not like the lion diet or something. Oh, that, doesn't, that, doesn't <laughs> that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. It's the oh, difference yeah. between meat-based and not meat-based. Right. That's what I see the carnivore diet is. Mm -hmm. or meat mostly <laughs> yes yeah meat meat yeah mostly. even though avocado mayo i actually uh, recommend anybody i coach go go ahead and uh, do that even though that's not ideal and i let them know that's not ideal mm -hmm. I, I let them know any spices is okay i'm assuming you use spices yourself right liberally right Charmin? Um, just, just pepper salt. and salt pepper and salt yeah uh -huh. So, and typically I tell them, hey, um, if you have to chop up onions or, or crack garlic, then that's a no-no. So any herbs are no. So that's it, it's just that simple. So it, yeah, you're totally carnivore. So that was awesome. Yeah, that, there's no training wheels about that, Sus. No training wheels. Oh, that, was, that was hard for <laughs> legit. Yeah, right. Oh, if I have cheese, that's cheating. No, <laughs> no. Yeah, it's not. not. At all. No, yeah. Not at all. And the only reason that I eat the way that I do with the lion's diet is because I'm that sick that I eliminated mm -hmm. all of the the stuff and then I reintroduced it and I had a reaction. Um, oh. So for me, I would be chugging some milk, I would be eating <laughs> some cheese, I would be enjoying a variety of things if I didn't have the reaction. I just found what works best for me. And with autoimmune disease, lion diet was the natural course for me. But oh. no, I I. I totally attribute everything that you ate to carnivore. Oh, okay, that's cool. And for for M, I mean, I I uh, I was the same for two two years until I met uh, Emily. Um, I was strictly uh, meat and cheese. So, you know, yeah, you did it all right. And then after that, I went to the lion diet. But again, you know, that's oh, wow. Emily. But I was already thriving by then. So, you know, I was just going for that extra little edge because I'm like, hey, if it works for her, you know, <laughs> let's see what happens to me. So, you know, it was that more out of curiosity. And sure enough, there's even more benefits out there. But I'm not sure if it's worth it. So, <laughs> I mean, it's a nice benefit. There's no question about it. But I'm not sure yeah, I, it's worth it. I think that's what's interesting about our community is not that we envy, but it's like we really try to eat as many different foods as we can. It's just that many of us can't. It's kind of, <laughs> you know, we, we get symptoms. So, I, you know, I posted on Instagram, you know, me eating that, that burger oh, yeah, that I had like that. mush, you know, the habit grill with mushrooms and tomatoes and pickles, you know. And I was like, this is nothing. I can roll with it. And I was okay. I was okay for about... 26 hours 28 hours or so oh. about a day and a half and then like i started to get this headache and then oh. for the and then for the next like 16 hours i had a migraine and that sucked and like i got moody and stuff too like it's so crazy so like you talk about you know trying to do carnivore and then trying to do like nuts and stuff like that you know mm -hmm. that your your body just becomes so adjusted to health and nutrition that for some of us um when we try to introduce something and there's debate whether it's like you know the toxins that are sprayed on the plants if it's mm. the actual plant toxins themselves the oxalates the cytokines you know um things of that the polyphenols um or if it's just that you know it, it, they do go through the uh gut barrier in the body and so we end up with an autoimmune reaction Mm. And the science is really not clear. And some say, well, does that mean you're weak? Are you weaker now that you can't have plant foods? And, and like, it's a good question. And I think it's a good debate in the community, you know, but I mean, many of us have pets. I have two cats that I've been fattening oh. up. Oh. oh, did we lose him? Justin. <laughs> 
<laughs> the internet's going floppy again. This fat cat is sitting on the <laughs> internet wire. <laughs> well, you know, my cats are all over my desk all the time where they're trying to chew my in ethernet cable. Like, I literally, gosh, I wonder if I could show you guys. Oh, I don't know if they'll show up. I have these things around my wires because they oh, chew yeah. up, like my stuff. So if it's a cat, I feel for him. <laughs> That's crazy. So um, any other questions you guys have for her? Well, yeah, Joe, uh, you want to you wanna, uh, give, give her your point of view? Because you, you've been at it for a while, too, so. Yeah, look, I, I did keto and I had nothing but acid reflux issues. Um, and, and, and I, I relate uh, to you, I would, all I'd want to do is eat nuts. You know, it was never a handful of nuts. It was always eat nuts, eat, you know, eat more. And then an hour later, eat a, few, eat a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I always had, I was always bloated and I always had the digestive issues. Oh, so, wow. but yeah, I mean, it, transitioning into carnivore for me personally, it was, you know, it was, it was excellent. I mean, acid reflux gone, bloating gone. So it was really good, but I just wanted to ask you: Did, did you cheat on any of the during the, any of those those thirty days? Um, no, like the whole thirty days, I just ate like little. It was like pork, eggs, and bacon, and the mayo every day. Like I'm, I'm fine with like eating the same thing like every day most most of the time. No I, I had, huh? No cravings. Um, no, not, not really. Um, I, I, I already don't really eat like, like sweets and stuff. Like I haven't like eaten like a baked good or something like that since like last year, like s since May of last year, like it was like my birthday and I kind of went crazy and I had macarons and all these things and I got so sick from it. I was like, I never want to go through that ever again. So it like traumatized me. Oh. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really crave so much. The only thing I was craving um, was honestly probably just wanted cheese a lot. <laughs> Were you craving any vegetables? Oh, no, actually not. Because since I tried the carnivore like nine days before already, um, I actually liked how that felt already at that time without the vegetables. So um, I, I felt like those first nine days I was craving vegetables, but then it kind of went away after that. Got it. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, really. You, so you had it pretty easy then. Um, so uh, even during your fast, you didn't crave or anything like that. Um, not really. Like, um, I, yeah, I, I felt like the only thing. Yeah, even during the thirty days of carnivore, I wasn't even really craving nuts anymore. I, I just really didn't want to eat them so much anymore. Um, mm -hmm. It's just the fasting. The only time I had a really hard time was when I did a thirty-six hour fast for the first time. Which is in the same time period. Great job on that one, by the way. Huh? Great job on that. Oh, thank you. I didn't know I could do it. It was yeah. like awesome. Yeah. And you helped to inspire me there too, because I would see you with your like crazy fast. I'm like, <laughs> oh, Raymond's always reaching those high numbers <laughs> on this app. Like, I want to be like, oh, I'm in the middle of my 36 hour fast. <laughs> <laughs> I get a little competitive. Um, but yeah, I, I just, uh, I did it. And then, um, I, I just felt at one point I felt really low energy and I just had salt water and that was it. But, um, but yeah, it was like, it was okay. I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't really. Wasn't that bad, was it? Uh, no, it felt like what I was normally eating already every day. It's just with like no vegetables and no nuts. I'll show you a better trick later on. That makes okay. it even easier. Yeah. Awesome. If you care to hear anyways, we'll see. Justin, do you want to finish up what you were saying? Sorry about that. Your yeah, did your did your cat like sit on the internet? <laughs> He's big enough to sit on the entire internet. That is true. <laughs> yeah. um, no, like you know, what was going there was a terrible joke about eating my cats. That that's oh. that's that where that was going. So it was probably. <laughs> Oh my gosh. The universe was, was trying to stop your horrible joke. Yeah. Yes, it was. And yet <laughs> you guys tempted off. fate. You guys know I'll just go there. You know, you guys shouldn't <laughs> give me the opportunity. Um, 
But yeah, so, okay, I am a little bit of a stickler because I am curious about the avocado mayo. Is it like the paleo, like it only has eggs or is it like avocado mayo from Vons? Oh no, it's, well, it's the Primal Kitchen. It's the Primal Kitchen. Yeah. Okay, I've had that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tried some of the ones from Vons and I was like, oh my God, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it, it took me a while. So I, I did a tiny bit of experiment. Uh, experimentation speaking words sometimes difficult anyway um <laughs> with keto and i did buy that mayo because transitioning to carnivore whatever you know you crave things or you're, you're you it's just this whole mind game basically and that stuff is flavorless like i just that's that's the point i'm trying to get to at least then it was flavorless you know but now I'm like, man, I wish I could have some primal mayo. Oh. <laughs> but I'm sure it would just like mess me up. And it would probably taste like so sweet to me. You know, the longer you're carnivore, just like if you try to eat something that's not the taste of meat, you're like, whoa, that has so much flavor. You know, it's, it's really crazy once you get to a point. And then you realize that you shouldn't be eating that because yeah. then you end up in pain. Well, some of us, not all of us. So, um, oh, yeah, Emily, me, yeah. yeah. Not so much Raymond anymore. I don't know. It's not worth it for me. It's all about performance now. So, after, okay, now, now that you've done 30 days, uh, what's your scale on as far as ease of the carnivore diet for you for that 30 days? How easy did you find it? Was it difficult on a scale of 1 to 10? Oh, like just committing to the whole 30 days? Mm-hmm. Um, while doing it too yeah of course i thought it was actually easier than keto like nice that's my experience too so yeah <laughs> so I, that's easy. what i like to hear like i mean literally the that's only crazy. thing we did was put meat in the like what is it the slow cooker and then the that's my prep yeah the instapot and like before on keto when i was eating vegetables like i would chop up the vegetables and all that and i thought that was way more tedious than anything I did in this past 30 days. <laughs> but it was so much easier. I think that was the lure for me with, with carnivore. And that was the, the reason that I was being able to be, uh, to comply was because it was so freaking simple. It was just so easy that everything else that I'd ever done where you have to count and calculate and measure and time, it was just like, you just eat meat. Right. Yeah, it was, it was super simple and it just, yeah, it wasn't a hassle. It's like, I don't even think it was a trouble at all. Like I, I would just like fry eggs, but that's not a big deal, you know? All right. So I got to ask, so you are working out every single day, it seemed like, on mm -hmm. the carnivore, the 30 days and probably still are right now. So mm -hmm. how were the soreness? How was the energy level? I mean, did you, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, what about performance? Performance, yeah. Oh, um, so yeah, like even though I woke up at 5.30 and stuff in the morning, um, I mean, my energy was always good. That's how I was able to keep it up every day. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like during the workout, I wouldn't really get tired. Like, um, y you know, I don't have those, like during the workouts, because before I, when I did... Um, like when I would eat sugar and stuff and have protein shakes, you would feel like the dips and energy and you would feel like you're going to die in the middle of the workout. But I mean, that basically was eliminated for me with keto, but um, doing carnivore with it, um, I do feel stronger. Like I definitely love the results with my physique also um, and my strength. <laughs> like um, it's just like like I literally looked at myself in the mirror and I'm like, damn, like, I feel like I'm like the most like lean I've yep. ever, like, been, even though I had a lot of muscle before eating like carbs and stuff. I had a lot of muscle, but, um, I don't know. I felt like a lot. Stronger. You're like defined now. It's like defined right. muscular. Yeah. It's like, it's like more spelt. Yeah. yeah. Right. Where, where the, the fat just like melts away and, and you become this definition. It's more, uh, visual, yeah. right. you know? Yeah. yeah, it shows a lot more. Um, even though the weird thing is, like, my weight is higher, though, than when I was eating, like, higher carb and doing CrossFit a lot, because a few years ago when I was higher carb, 
Um, I had a lot of muscles, um, but I was probably like, you know, 95 to 97 pounds. And right now I'm like 100 to 101. And that's like a lot for like a small person like me. Yeah, I guess. So. Um, but like, even if I'm have more weight, like, I don't know, I still feel good. So it's kind of a weird place for me. I'm like, oh, should I be at this weight or should I be less? Oh, I see, I see. Oh. But, but I mean, see, it's muscle though. I'm sorry, Joe. Yeah, I was going to say it, it, it's muscle. I mean, you'd be concerned if you'd been putting on weight and it's fat, but if it's muscle, it's a good thing. Yeah, because, I, yeah, I guess that's hard for me to tell sometimes. I'm like, oh, how do I know it's muscle or not? But, but, um, that probably is it because I've been eating the same, but yeah. my weight has been kind of going up a little. Yeah, we can see it in the pictures. I mean, damn, I mean, your before and after pictures are incredible. I mean, oh, thank you. I, I they really are. Yeah, oh, I was surprised you. how much benefit you got out of it because you were already lean, mm -hmm. like you said. So to see that kind of benefit, I was just like, holy cow, that's, that's telling, you know? So. Yeah, and I, I definitely think I was having so many carbs from the nuts and stuff too. So it's crazy when you just take that out. And um, yeah, the muscle definition just like shows a lot easier. Like I feel like the fat has melted off my back. It's like crazy. I'm like, oh, I like this. And even though the weight's a little higher, I'm like, oh, I, I feel good though. Like I feel good. I feel strong. Um, I've been lifting a weight that I haven't lifted in a long time now at home with my dumbbell wow. Wow. and and I don't feel like before my I would have knee weakness sometimes when I go back to the barbell and when I squat I would still have a little bit of joint pain in my knees but lately I don't have any knee pain even when I run because when I run I would have wow. knee, but now I don't really have that anymore can you tell if your run has improved also in yeah yeah my running because before even on keto, um, yeah, sometimes if I don't run regularly and I run, like I go back into it, my knees would like hurt right away um, if I wasn't lifting consistently. But now, I mean, I am lifting consistently though more now, but, so I'm like, oh, I don't know what it is, but um, when I run, I don't really have pain anymore. Um, and I've been running faster. I do weighted runs like once a week now with my wow, weight. Wow, the best, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and I do a hill training once a week and it's just a lot easier now. Wow. So what's your plan going forward? Do you think that you'll stick with this way of eating for now or what's your, what's your future plans? I think like, I like the results I have now. Um, what I've been doing in the meantime is I, I still eat the same like six out of seven days of the week. It's just one day of the week I have a joy eat. So I had like that pastrami sandwich the other day. It's just like for my boyfriend's birthday. But once a week, I'll just have something maybe that has carbs that I would want to eat if I want to eat it though. But if I don't want to, I don't have to have it. But, um, but yeah. Do you have any reaction to the, the sandwich? Surprisingly, not really. Like, I don't Good. know if the bread, because it was like a rye bread um, that's made from, I, I think they make it there. Um, but think I didn't actually react to it too much. And their meat was like good. It was like good pastrami. Um, so it was awesome. I actually didn't react to it that much. Good. 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 Cool. It yeah. shocked me. I was like, oh my God, this bread's going to kill me. But um, I was like, <laughs> fishy bread. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was my first time having bread in a year. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but, but me and Michael, like we, we wanted to eat at this pastrami place for a while. Um, and then, yeah, the last time we ate bread was at another pastrami place in New York, um, Cat's Deli. So, uh, so yeah. I love cats. Yeah, so good. I had that when I was 17 and I still remember it. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, super good. So you might be sticking with this for, for the long term then? Yeah, I think so, because I, awesome. I, I'm honestly, like, I just don't really want reflux again, like, I, and I don't really miss the vegetables, like, now I'm really, like, I don't crave vegetables anymore, um, I got avocado, but even thinking about it, I'm like, I don't really want to eat avocado so much anymore, like, um, I don't know, I might, I don't really have a strong need for it if I just get my fat from, like, bacon or something, like, I don't really... I'm just like, why would I need an avocado if I have like bacon or something? 
Like, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. like, the bacon so exists. Hard, why anything else? Yeah, that's right. Why yeah, so, anything else? Oh, the only reason why I got it though in Costco was because um, they ran out. Like, the bacon's been out lately, the one that I get. So um, I got it just in case, but I've been okay without. Uh, I haven't really been eating the avocado. So I feel, I don't know, I feel better without it. So, I'm, so yeah. Wow, this so is I'm kinda fantastic. So I'm kind of curious. Um, ha have you ever been one to track your ketones? Did you track do any ketone tracking while carnivore? No, I wish I I would want to test that out. That'd be a fun experiment. Um, but yeah, I never went that crazy. I just go by like, what's my energy? How do I, you know, am I? Oh, and another great thing on carnivore too, too is like my fasting was a lot easier. Like I, I was able to fast 20 to 24 hours like consistently for most of it. Um, but yeah, um, I never went that crazy. Like, do you know what, I mean, do you recommend doing that or what do you do with that? Only for scientific <laughs> curiosity. Uh -huh. Um, you know, other than that, many, many carnivores, not that they're anti-testing, it's just uh -huh. that, uh, ketone science is actually really bad as uh -huh. far as day to day, day to day and, um, tracking how you feel and everything, you know, even with migraines with Angela Statton's program, you know, we were required to track. So I used to track uh -huh. my blood ketones, but I could never find any kind of correlation between feeling bad and having like higher ketones or lower ketones. And what I think it is, is, is you just don't like your insulin. You don't want to be really, really high and then drop really, really low, you know? And I think that's the same for insulin. And I think that's what causes us to be dysregulated uh, hormonally. And that can cause issues for some of us. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can, but um, it's not required or anything. Nobody here tracks. None of us track. Um, it but it many takes of, away from the simplicity of it. Right. Because well, what I, mean, I love about it is that it's so simple. Pers personally, I think I would track blood glucose more than ketones. Because the thing is, with, 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 with ketones, a lot of people think that the higher the number, the better it is. But see, for someone like myself and possibly you as well, my ketones are always very low. Okay. And that isn't because I'm not in ketosis. It, all it means is that my body is more efficient in using the ketones. Uh -huh. So a lot of people see a low number and they think, Oh my God, I'm not in you know, ketosis or, you know, I'm not burning fat, but it's can be the, the quite opposite. That's the thing about athletes too. Like their numbers are just weird. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, was that, see, if they're low carb and they are active, your numbers just get all effed up and the, nobody yeah. can explain it. Yes. I mean, like during the day, uh, you know, my ketones can be quite low. And then if I go out, come back from a big ride, they, they're elevated. Obviously I've had to produce more energy. Mm. Um, and Zach Bitter is the same as well. And I know Benjamin Bickman spoke about that too uh, in, in a podcast about a, two years ago with Sean about the ketone numbers, but yeah, blood glucose for me is, it's something that I'm more interested in than, than the ketones. Have you done the continuous blood monitoring? No, not the continuous, but I, I've got the, well, it's called the Optimum here over, over here. It's a freestyle machine, very mm -hmm. similar to the Keto Mojo. And I just prick my finger and get it from that. Oh, okay. Blood reading. I'd be curious to do that for a week as an experiment sometime. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I just, I, I just want to thank you for trying this. Well, you know, I think so many people are just so, it, it, they just get in their head about carnivore. And they, they even going from keto to carnivore, they, they get so stuck. And just the fact that you tried it is just so awesome to me. And I'm just, I love it. I'm so excited. And I'm glad that you had a good experience. Oh, thank you. I mean, I wasn't going to try it again until I met these guys in the conference. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know. This is kind of scary. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm really glad you guys like supported me and it gave me the opportunity to meet all of you. And um, yeah, I was really grateful for just having your encouragement. Uh, it felt really good. So I appreciate that push. 
Yeah, and now you're superhuman and you know how to look hot. Yeah. And I I love it. And I just champion you as a fellow woman. I am so proud of you. Thank you so much. And uh, I mean, I would love it if, if you actually stayed on this uh, for six months and all, I think you should definitely add that repertoire on your coaching. You know, I, I don't know how you feel about that, but uh, it would be a great option for some folks too, you know? Like, uh, like to diversify, to diversify. Mm. Yeah. You know, you, you're to doing still be coaching. the sugar free and keto. Yeah. yeah, of course. And that could be still your main platform, but you could offer that extra coaching also if you wanted to. That would be cool. Like some of my, one of my clients was, um, you know, some of them are interested since I, since I do eat that way and I post my food, they're like, you tell us to eat protein, veggies, and fat all the time, but you never eat veggies. And I'm like, oh yeah, well, I'm trying this thing, you know? And um, but then a lot of them actually are interested. And I think it's great for women's health too, because a lot of women really plateau with the keto. Um, so I think that would be a great option, but yeah, I would definitely be open to that. I think a lot of women should try it. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, especially for women, you know, later in life, you know, a lot of women have osteoporosis and the reason why they end up with osteoporosis, right. Is, you know, the, the calcium leaking out because of the lack of protein to keep mm -hmm. rebuilding their um, calcium and the bone cells, you know, cause that's, that's made out of pure protein. And so it's actually especially important for women and women later in life to possibly go carnivore or more meat-based to stave off or even prevent osteoporosis. Yeah. So there's even more of a need for women to, to be carnivore, I think, and fertility and, and other factors as well. And I do thank you, Charmaine, for trying because I, I think in some people's minds, it can be tagged as carnivore as the sick people diet because of so many people that come to carnivore are like at death's door in one way or another, you know? Uh -huh. um, and not a lot of people that are healthy, you know, people that are healthy, like, oh, I can eat whatever I want or I'm keto and I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, we don't know, you're still young. I'm not trying to call you out or anything like that, but, you know, um, people, we, people can still get diabetes when they're 50 and 60. You know what I mean? Even if they believe that they're eating healthy, you know, and it's about the long game and the quality of life up until 80, 90, who knows, you know, there's no guarantees, obviously. Um, but yeah, so I really thank you for encouraging others and uh, letting me snipe some of the threads on your Facebook page with a carnivore propaganda. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> So this, as also for um, Raymond too, like for just challenging me to do that 30 day challenge, like he's like, yeah, we're doing this thing in April. I'm like, oh gosh, 30 days of it. I don't know. Okay. I'll try because, you know, I wanted to be competitive. I'm like, yeah, I can do 30 days. So thank you for that. You rock. So has this changing the way you coach at all, the way you thinking, the way that, you know, maybe it has an effect in that, you know, like you said, it notices your, your clients are noticing you being even more strict. So do you think that motivates them of their cravings as well? Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Cause I think if you're an example, especially as a coach and you want to be in integrity with everything you teach and you want to show, like, I like being transparent and telling them if I do anything where if I eat off plan, if, what I'm eating, I like to just show that with them. And um, and that's part of why some of them sign with me. They see my Instagram post and they're like, oh, I see you're really in integrity. That's why I wanted to coach with you. Um, and then, yeah, and it, it helps them really focus on real food. Like all of my clients eat basically just real foods um, most of the time. Most of them eat like eat mostly like fats and proteins. They don't really eat a whole, like they struggle, like a lot of them struggle with the veggies. So that's kind of good because most people struggle with veggies anyway. Um, but yeah, they, I feel like they, they enjoy, like they find that they actually enjoy eating that way. And, um, and then, yeah, one of my clients recently told me, she's like, oh, I just love this way of eating. It's so simple. Um, so, so that was awesome. That's, that's cool. Great. Yeah. 
And so for those that don't know, the last time we interviewed Charmaine, she was still a psychiatric nurse, <laughs> um, but she's actually quit that job and is a full-time coach now. So what's the future of sugar-free self-care, your carb-free, sugar-free empire? What's, what's oh, next? Oh, man. Oh, gosh. So I have a plan to create a membership site. Um, it's in the works, but I want to reach as many people as possible to do like a membership program and then also like a group coaching program because I just want to reach as many people as I can because um, so many more people need to eat this way. Like I, I'm just like, oh, it makes me like so sad to see how so many people are still eating with the dietary guidelines and all that. So I'm just like, oh my gosh, we have so much to do, like so many people to reach. So, um, so yeah, that's like in the works. And I think awesome. that's why we celebrate you so much is because, you know, the need is so great. I mean, we can never get enough people, um, you know, trying to teach this yeah. way of eating. Uh, keto, carnivore, sugar-free, all of it, you right. know? So thank you for all that you do. We really, really, um, we just, we've loved getting to know you. I mean, we've just loved watching your journey. Um, and I, the best is yet to come, sis. I cannot wait to see what happens. Oh, thank you so much, you guys. Oh, you guys have been awesome and you really helped me with my success and um, just loved even just being in WhatsApp and seeing what you guys are up to that helped me feel like, oh, I have a little like, you know, family, you know. With yeah, nice. absolutely. Yeah, and that's what, you know, the keto community, the low carb community, the carnivore community, um, we really bond with each other. Like, you know, like we just get each other and I think mm -hmm. we're all just so open and willing to like talk to each other about the struggles, the good days, the bad days. Um, so, you know, on that note, that heartfelt note, that loving note that, um, you know, I think uh, we can put this episode in the can. Any last thoughts from anybody? Charmaine, um, do you want to do your plugs? Or Yeah, we'll definitely put your links in the show notes. But do you want to tell people how they can get a hold of you? Uh, sure. I love Instagram. Um, you could see my kittens there. So I'm on Instagram.com forward slash sugar free dot self care. Don't forget the dot because it's hip and whatnot. So sugar free dot self care. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is in. I got to put a dot. And then um, my website with my free trainings, like I have a free meal prep course there on sugar free self care.com. That's awesome. Thank you awesome. for your time. Yes. Thank you, and guys. that's why I have the all out life dot carnivore also on Instagram. <laughs> See the dot. It is important. It's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah. It is. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Validated. You've been validated. Thank you. <laughs> all, right. all right. Well, yeah, this is a lot of fun. Always a pleasure to have you back, Charmaine, whenever you want to come on here and talk about any new projects, any new carnivore, any of your clients. If, you know, your clients are starting out, especially that first week, you know, it'd be really great to do a video with people that are like their first week on carnivore, you know, coming from you or anywhere, you know, a video like that. So that, you know, we, I think there's a need for transformation in real time. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's really important to see the struggle in real time or not struggle, but, you know, some people consider it a struggle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, you know, the number one thing is just to help people not fall, not fall down the carb hole. <laughs> All right. Everybody, so like, support. subscribe. Thank you for watching. <laughs>